Robin Hood Radio presents Your Health with osteopathic physician Dr. Kim Tripp, a show presented monthly on Robin Hood Radio, discussing the challenges faced and the solutions that are available for keeping vital health and well-being throughout our lives. And now, here's Dr. Tripp. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to Your Health with Dr. Kim Tripp, osteopathic physician. This is the health show created to bring you vital information and discussion of all sorts of health issues on your mind and in your life from the unique perspective of traditional osteopathic medicine. So first, as we always do for our new listeners, let's clarify what osteopathic medicine means. Osteopathic medicine is practiced by fully licensed physicians in the United States with a DO degree, a doctor of osteopathic medicine degree. Our practice is based on the essential relationship in all living things between structure and function. In other words, the natural interdependence between anatomy and physiology, or that between the physics of the body and its chemistry. As osteopathic physicians, we use our comprehensive and precisely detailed knowledge of anatomy and physiology to promote health and healing in our patients. We work gently with our hands to help your body restore optimal function based on optimal structure. Our medical specialty is therefore called osteopathic manual medicine. We receive uniquely in-depth training in anatomy and physiology and their relationship within your body in the context of a full physician's medical training. Only U.S. trained osteopaths are fully licensed physicians and have all of the current medical pharmacopoeia, nutritional science, and full medical training at our disposal. This means that your individual treatment may include a wide range of approaches, but it will always be founded on our gentle hands-on work. We practice from the unique perspective of first looking for the health in our patients rather than merely finding illness and disease. Our practice has been especially effective for, but it's not limited to, musculoskeletal and other structural issues as well as chronic problems like headache, GI problems, post-concussive syndrome, sleep disturbance, allergies, and many other health problems. We work together with you, the patient, to help you build health and vitality in your body, mind, and spirit as the solution for your health problems, rather than only treating the disease symptoms. So in the radio show, we tackle health issues from this point of view. What can we do to help you build your health and vitality in order to prevent and heal injuries and disease? And we do that by giving you some basic information about the problem to help you understand what's happening as well as offer solutions and guidance for helping yourself to heal and stay healthy based on our clinical experience with patients in our practice. Before we get started on today's topic, let me remind you that you can listen to all of the prior Your Health shows online at your convenience by going to the Goldman Trip website www.goldmantripp.net. You can click on the radio show icon, then scroll down and click on the individual show by topic. There are now more than 40 shows available. You can also get the most recent show podcasts right on the Robin Hood Radio website itself in the On Demand section. All at your fingertips. Today we're going to continue our series on the human endocrine system. That is, our system of glands that control so much of our physiology and function. To review, the endocrine system glands produce and secrete hormones. That is, chemicals produced in the body that regulate the activity of cells or organs by acting as chemical messengers. These hormones are produced by the glands and then are circulated to the target tissues to regulate the body's growth, metabolism, and sexual development and function. The hormones are released into the bloodstream and may affect one or several sets of organs, tissues, and or specific cells throughout the body. The basic components of the endocrine system are the hypothalamus, pituitary, thyroid, parathyroids, pineal, adrenals, pancreas, yes, that pancreas that we otherwise know from the digestive system, and the reproductive organs, the ovaries and testes. The endocrine system is regulated by what we call a feedback mechanism, that is, in an analogous way that a thermostat regulates the temperature in a room. 
Most of the glands are regulated by the hypothalamus and pituitary in concert. The hypothalamus is part of your brain. The pituitary gland is that small gland that sits suspended from the hypothalamus and resting in a bony saddle in the middle of your skull, just below your brain. The hypothalamus and pituitary sample levels of different active hormones in your blood and respond to those levels by secreting controlling hormones that tell the glands to make more of their hormones if the levels are low, or in some cases, inhibits those glands from making more of their hormones if the levels are high. The hypothalamus and pituitary are the controlling entities for most of the endocrine system. In general, the hypothalamus acts by controlling the pituitary, which then sends out the specific stimulating hormone for a given gland. The hypothalamus influences the functions of temperature regulation, hunger and food intake, thirst and water intake, sleep and wake patterns, emotional behavior, and memory. We've already considered the pituitary, thyroid, and parathyroid glands. Today, we're going to consider the pineal gland. So then let's start with the basics of pineal gland anatomy and function. The pineal gland is a small pine cone shaped gland, hence its name. It's found near the center of the brain in most vertebrate animals, including humans. The pineal gland sits behind the third ventricle in the human brain and is about the dimensions of a fat grain of rice in humans but it's pine cone shaped, of course. The third ventricle is one of the four cerebral spinal fluid filled cavities in the brain that make up the ventricular system. The pineal gland has been known for millennia and has had many mystical and spiritual roles and qualities attributed to it. For example, in the Western tradition, Descartes called the pineal the seat of the soul, the place where the body and soul connect and from which our thoughts originate. The pharaohs of Egypt believed that the pineal was the equivalent of the eye of their god Horus. The Hindu tradition described the, quote, third eye of spiritual enlightenment as an actual third eye that atrophied into the pineal gland deep in the brain. The earliest surviving description of the pineal in the Western tradition came from Galen's writing in which he acknowledged the prior knowledge of the gland and named it, quote, pineal because of its resemblance to pine nuts or pine cones. Recall that Galen was the prominent Greek physician, writer, and philosopher who had a vastly dominant influence on medical theory and practice in Europe from the Middle Ages until the mid-17th century. Many of these earlier attributes of the pineal and its perceived relationships to vision and enlightenment stem from the observed role of the pineal in light perception related to circadian and seasonal rhythms of sleep and wakefulness and seasonal reproductive and activity cycles in animals. The exact nature of the role of the pineal gland in humans is still not entirely understood. We do know that it produces melatonin, Melatonin is the hormone responsible for influencing our circadian rhythm, particularly regarding the onset of sleep. Circadian rhythms are the inherent biological rhythms associated with the planet's day-night cycles. In both diurnal, meaning active during the day, and nocturnal, meaning active at night, mammals, melatonin is synthesized and released in rhythmic fashion during the dark part of the day-night cycle. Melatonin production is controlled by an internal circadian timing system and is also suppressed by light exposure. In lower vertebrates, like fish and amphibians, the pineal gland is directly sensitive to light and is the location of a self-regulating circadian clock. In mammals, including humans, the pineal gland has lost its ability to directly perceive light. Instead, the pineal responds to light indirectly via a complex pathway that involves specialized retinal ganglion cells containing the photopigment, melanopsin, and a part of the brain that is our primary circadian regulator called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, 
or SCN for short, which is in the hypothalamus. Through this pathway, light is perceived in the retina by the nerve cells, rods and cones, that are sensitive to light in the eye. Specialized retinal ganglia, in other words, receptive nerve tissue, carry the impulses generated by the light to the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus in the brain. The nerve fibers from the hypothalamus give fibers off to the superior cervical ganglia in the spinal cord, and the nerve signals then travel along this network to the spinal cord itself. From the spinal cord, messages are then sent back to the pineal gland via another set of nerves. So the pineal gland receives information about light perception in the eye via a complex set of nerves that translate the information to the pineal gland via the hypothalamus and the spinal cord itself. In this way, the fact that the pineal gland is sitting deep inside the brain does not preclude it receiving information about what the light in the outside world is doing. In humans, melatonin levels are low during the day and higher during the night, with greater melatonin release occurring during longer nights. The current thinking is that the melatonin helps to set our inherent circadian rhythms with regard to when we should go to sleep and wake up, rather than being a direct sleep inducer. Melatonin supplements can have a soporific effect, meaning they make us drowsy, but generally only work best when taken when our natural melatonin levels would be low, in other words, during the day, hence making it helpful in coping with jet lag and travel. Melatonin also seems to slightly lower body temperature and blood pressure, which are both associated with getting ready for sleep. Melatonin also appears to have other roles in the body besides regulating the timing of sleep. For example, melatonin levels can be associated with the onset of puberty and play a significant role in regulating the immune system, such that higher levels of melatonin stimulate immune function. Melatonin receptors have been found in a range of lymphoid cells and tissues in the immune system itself. Melatonin has also been shown to be a powerful antioxidant, and it appears to have cancer growth inhibiting properties. Melatonin plays a role in women's hormonal physiology, and there is increasingly strong evidence that melatonin plays a protective role in cardiovascular, reproductive, and mental health. You can see why developing a clear understanding of the role of melatonin in human physiology has been elusive. So in fact, that little pineal gland that produces the melatonin has an influence on many key aspects of human health. What happens when the pineal gland is not healthy? Well, there can be a host of diverse symptoms because of its wide range of influences. The most common pineal pathology is development of any one of numerous types of tumor in or around the pineal gland itself. The pineal gland is located near many other important structures in the brain, and it interacts with blood and other fluids. So a pineal gland tumor may affect many other things in your body. Some early symptoms of pineal dysfunction, particularly a tumor, can include seizures, disruption of memory or sleep, headaches, nausea, or changes in vision or other senses. However, many other health problems can cause one or more of these symptoms as well. So please don't assume you have a pineal tumor if you suffer from one of these problems. Instead, do see a physician for a full evaluation and appropriate specialist referral if needed and any possible brain imaging that might be needed as well. Sleep disruption can be caused and influenced by many, many internal and external factors, including the pineal gland and melatonin production, but by no means limited to these. Sleep is a comprehensive topic in and of itself that we're going to tackle in a later show from all the angles. Meanwhile, also recall that a long list of environmental pollutants and agricultural chemicals have been found to disrupt endocrine function at many levels in people and animals, including in the pineal gland. So be very cautious when using any household or landscape chemicals. 
These chemicals are called endocrine disrupting chemicals, and they are defined by the World Health Organization as, quote, an exogenous substance or mixture that alters functions of the endocrine system and consequently causes adverse health effects, end quote. The UN published a list of these in 2018, and more information on this is available at www.unenvironment.org. In concert with all of its regulatory effects, the comprehensive endocrine system is intimately involved with the nervous system and the immune system and can have profound effects on all aspects of our general well-being and health. Any new or concerning symptoms should always be evaluated by a physician. If you think you have an endocrine problem, you should be evaluated by a physician and potentially also by an endocrinologist. The pineal gland, like all the endocrine glands, is key to the complex integrated function of your entire endocrine system and therefore to your overall health. Through coordination by the hypothalamus and pituitary, as well as by the primary responses of all of the endocrine glands and their associated responding organs, all these complex integrated physiological functions remain in normal and appropriate balance. So how do we keep our pineal gland healthy? Eat a well-balanced, toxin-free diet. Maintain adequate hydration and avoid head injuries, smoking, excess radiation, and environmental pollutants. Avoid using any supplemental hormones and only use supplementation as directed. Always use these supplements with the direction of a knowledgeable physician. Get plenty of fresh air, stretching, and exercise that helps minimize stress and stimulates your respiratory and cardiovascular systems. Be aware that anything that leads to significant restriction of the muscles and fascias in the head and neck can potentially impact the health of the pineal gland. Exercise and gentle stretching programs that keep your neck flexible and strong to ensure good blood flow and lymphatic drainage to and from the neck, head, and brain will be beneficial to the health of this gland. Which brings me back to osteopathy and to the close of today's show with a reminder that an osteopathic physician who is a specialist in osteopathic manual medicine can be very helpful for endocrine issues of all kinds, working gently with our hands with the involved organs, nerves, vasculature, fascias, organ capsules, and associated tissues to release restrictions in the physical tissues of the head, neck, and glands, the diaphragm, the blood and lymphatic flow, as well as to help balance the autonomic nervous system function based on anatomical detail, and to help with nutritional issues and support for whatever procedures or treatments you may be going through. Recall that all of the endocrine system is a complex physical entity with connections between all the parts that need to be open, flexible, and moving freely with excellent neural conduction from the nerves, optimal arterial and venous blood flow, and lymphatic drainage to remain healthy, vital, and functioning normally. Now I seem to have run out of time again. That happens every time. Thank you so much for your attention to your health with Dr. Kim Tripp. Remember, you can email your comments and suggestions for topics to your health at robinhoodradio.com. If you have a health issue yourself and would like to find out about how we might be able to help you in our practice of traditional osteopathy, we're at our offices in Sharon, Connecticut, Dr. Kim Tripp and Dr. Andrew Goldman, Goldman Tripp Osteopathic Healthcare, 860-364-5990, Monday to Friday, 845 to 5 p.m. with evening hours Wednesdays and Fridays, or on the web at www.goldmantripp.net. I'll be looking forward to being with you next time. Till then, you take care of yourself, enjoy your health, and thank you for listening.